Welcome, everyone, to a very special softball edition of On Texas Football. I'm your host, Blake Monroe, where I'm joined by two very special guests, University of Texas legend Cat Osterman, along with Longhorn starting catcher Reese Atwood. And Reese, y'all are 13-1, and one, four top 10 wins already. Y'all have outscored opponents in those wins, 116-13. to 13. I mean, that in itself is incredible. But you're already a big time, a big two-time Big 12 Player of the Week. You've been named the NFCA Player of the Week twice as well. And you've hit nine home runs this season already. Uh, you've made a name for yourself just weeks into the season. So I'm curious, what did you really focus on during the offseason to be able to come in and make such an instant impact? Yeah, over the offseason, I really focused on uh, my mental game and being able to uh, trust the process of like my at-bats and take that more into consideration instead of just going in and taking hundreds of cuts off the tee, just focusing on like what I'm doing to prepare for certain at-bats against certain pitchers. Reese, early success in season a lot of times isn't um, this successful. So talk to us about how did you enter season with the mindset of just being able to go? Yeah, so I think like my mindset this year has uh, really changed compared to last year. Like I'm, I think the pressure has been taken off um, just because like I have such a strong team behind me and a big support system who has my back. And this team has really done like a great job of being able to uh, come in certain situations and um, just be there for me in certain situations. Can you talk to us a little bit about the team um, this year? Obviously, you guys didn't didn't lose a whole lot. You obviously graduated Lou, a couple transferred, but for the most part, um, you guys are all returning. So talk about what the difference from last year is to this year and then just how the freshmen add to that. Yeah, so this team this year is just one big family. I think everyone has like a connection, and I think that's – uh, what's really helped us this year, like as a start, uh, everyone's doing like really good. The freshmen coming in uh, have been like extremely great, uh, very strong mentally and being able to step up in uh, big, uh, big situations in um, against all the teams. Talk to us a little bit. Obviously, I know about the pitcher catcher relationship and how important it is. Um, talk to us about your relationship with uh, you, not just one, but you have five arms that you have to um, keep going throughout the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that relationship is super important uh, in this game and being able to catch more bullpens and sit in with the pitchers and their meetings and understand like what their uh, thought process is and being able to like know what they need in certain situations to be able to call timeout or uh, just being able to like know like what to say to them. I have a question for you. Who are some of the players for, you know, maybe those that aren't as familiar as with the softball team as both of y'all obviously are that people need to keep an eye on, whether that's younger players or maybe somebody under the radar, who would you say has the potential to really stand out this season? I think that's really hard to just pick one. I think everyone on this team is um, great individually. And I think someone mm -hmm. right now who's like really standing out to me is uh, Victoria. She's like doing great uh, coming in and like getting her pinch hit at bats. And she's done extremely well with that. Um, I think the whole team is honestly, I think anyone that steps up to the plate right now with anyone on our team is going to be in trouble. And then y'all schedule. That's something else I wanted to ask you about. I mean, and we talked to Coach White about it on Coffee and Football just a couple of, of weeks ago. Y'all have such an incredibly tough schedule, um, just multiple top 10 teams and top 25 teams on there. Is that something that y'all look forward to? And how do you feel that prepares you for conference play? Yeah, it's definitely something we would look forward to. Uh, even throughout the fall, we were talking about our schedule and who we are going to be playing and certain pitchers. Uh, I think it's really going to prepare us for what we have to come uh, in Big 12. Obviously, our conference is pretty tough, so this preparation is very important for us coming into conference play starting soon. Reese, we, we talk about schedule. Uh, how do you feel – well, two questions. So one, we know that weekend in April is circled when uh, the Sooners come to town. So talk about what that weekend means to the team. Um, obviously, you haven't played that that series at home yet. And then the qu second part of the question is going to be, how do you feel moving um, into the SEC? We were just actually talking to that before the show, but next year is going to look uh, drastically different. Yeah, that weekend in April is definitely coming up. Uh, I think this team is ready for it. Uh, we've prepared uh, a lot throughout the season, postseason or preseason uh, in the fall. I think this team is going to 
it's going to change a lot of things. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, we've prepared for it. I think everyone's ready. So excited to see that. And then playing in the SEC, I mean, that's going to be awesome. I'm super excited to be able to compete with some of the best teams in the country. And it's going to be like a every weekend basis. We're going to be playing some of the toughest teams. So I'm really excited to be able to experience that. So, Reese, I'm going to go back. A really elementary question, but again, a lot of the people that are going to listen to this aren't necessarily big-time softball fans. What was it that made Reese Atwood say yes to Texas? Uh, I'd say being close to home. Uh, I really like the fact that my family can make pretty much all the games. So that was a big thing. And also the culture here, the coaching staff, it's just one big family. I think there's so many support systems that we have in place that – you're never going to be in a situation that you don't have someone that's going to have your back or have someone next to you to like walk you through whatever you're going through. Do you feel like physically that you've made an adjustment um, from last year to this year to be able to be, I don't want to say a better hitter, but I think consistently more, um, more aggressive and just producing more. I think physically uh, over the past, I guess the summer and the fall over the break, uh, I spent a lot of time in the weight room getting stronger. And then another thing that I changed was just trying to be like more slow in my swing and my low, just slow and easy. Uh, I think last year was a little bit of um, like I was trying to do too much. So I think I took that away from this year and it's been able to give me the opportunity to like see the ball a lot better. Uh, know the strike zone was another big thing. So did you know prior to – well, and I'm sure it might actually still hold true after last night. Didn't get to watch long game. Did you know that you have not seen a full count all year yet? Holy moly. <laughs> you like to swing the bat early and often, I've come to figure out. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, talk about that a little bit, though. I think um, hitters see – or, I mean, fans see your power. Um, but as a hitter, uh, where are you the most comfortable? Uh, definitely early, uh, early in the count. I mean, I'm hunting first pitch and every single at bat. Uh, if it's not there, I've gotten better at holding. So that's definitely a positive. Um, just being able to be like aggressive and it's like a yes, yes approach until you know it's a ball. Nice. Can you talk to us a little bit? Um, everyone knows Coach White, obviously, but can you talk about um, the assistants on staff, Coach Singleton, Coach Z, and then adding Patty Ruth Taylor this year? How has that um, added to the mix? Yeah, Coach Singh is great. I mean, I can work with him in the cages at any time. And he's always has, like, the right thing to say and the right verbiage that really, like, connects with me. Um, Coach G the same way. She kind of taught me this little trick uh, over, I guess, right when we got back in January. And I've stuck with that. And I think that's uh, given me a lot, uh, a lot of success um, starting off right now. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, Coach PR is awesome. I mean, she gives you all the – um positive things and like encourages you but she's also one that's not afraid to like stand up and give you the uh like what you need to do better on and i really uh, appreciate that about her you talked about the uh, assistant coaches but i, I want to go back to coach white for a second when we had him on we we tried to get him to kind of pat himself on the back a little bit but he was very reluctant to do it you know he he wanted to praise y'all and praise the assistant coaches but can you talk about him a little bit, maybe both on and off the field, his coaching style and just, you know, how it is playing for him? Yeah, playing for him, I mean, it's been a great experience for me. Uh, just being able to, like, play under someone who has so much, like, knowledge of the game and who has been there and who's played against some of the best, like, men's fast pitch uh, players. Like, he definitely knows a lot about the game, and he's always someone you can go to in any type of situation that he's going to know the answer to. So. What's batting practice like against Coach White? <laughs> <laughs> I will say he did strike me out uh, a couple weeks ago, and he has not let me off about that. Uh, it's definitely tough. I mean, he can throw hard. He can spin it every direction, change up sturdy. I mean, I couldn't imagine actually facing him throwing live. So you're saying he's a little bit competitive when he's supposed to be throwing batting practice. He's very competitive when he's uh, throwing batting practice. I will say that. <laughs> Um, talk to us a little bit. I obviously have, you know, a little inside knowledge, but you guys prepare for a season by doing um, athletes and limited style scrimmages. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and um, who stood out this year? Who I don't even remember. I don't think Coach Singleton even told me who won it this year. So can you talk to us a little bit about that and how that helps you guys prepare? Yeah. So like as a team, uh, basically, like we pick teams 
and you go out there and you play a game and it's like individual like point system but you also get points throughout the team and I think that really gave us like um a competitive nature like coming into like season like being able to like compete against some of the best pitchers in the country just because they're on our team it's really like prepared us uh for facing the pitchers we faced season so I think that definitely was like a big uh positive from those AU scrimmages and just being able to play with like I said like some of the best pitchers in the country. It's like your team but now you're playing against them so it was definitely a lot of fun. So we've talked a lot about softball, obviously, um, but what is it that Reese Atwood likes to do outside of the white lines? Yeah, so outside of softball, um, I, I grew up on a ranch, so my family is like always out there just hunting, fishing, things like that, just enjoying the outdoors. Okay, what's your favorite kind of hunting? Just whitetail. Gotcha. My husband's a bit, he likes bow hunting, so he's oh. always out doing, well, doing something. We talked about this with you, Kat, actually, about what it was like for you to be on campus at a time when pretty much all Texas sports were just, you know, insanely good. And we're kind of getting back to that point now at Texas where pretty much all sports are doing very, very well. So, Reese, can you talk about that a little bit? I know when, when we asked Kat about it, she said it was fun, you know, supporting the other teams, having those other teams support softball, that type of deal. But can you talk about that relationship now? Yeah, I think it's great seeing like fellow athletes succeed. Uh, like when we're watching them on TV or going to the games, just being able to uh, congratulate them when you see them in class or when you're walking around uh, the facilities. I think it's like a great support system and like knowing that all the programs support you. Uh, I know this fall, I think fall, yeah, we played um, like beach volleyball at the beach volleyball facility. So like that was definitely cool. And then they came out and tried to play softball with us. And it was like just being able to create those relationships to have like other UT athletes supporting you. Another personal question. Why, why 14? <laughs> this is a bad answer. So you probably can't put this in there. It's just my birthday. <laughs> Not a bad answer. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I was nine my whole life, and then I think Lou had it last year. I'm not very big on, like, superstitions, so, like, 14 was all I could come up with. Hey, it works. It works. <laughs> um, talk to us. I know uh, you like to do some charitable work in your free time, the little free time you probably have. Um, <laughs> but can you talk to us about what it is you do and, and why you choose the organizations that you work with? Yeah, so, like, I just started – which I actually haven't even like done any with this organization yet, but it's like a military warriors organization and they come out to the ranch, uh, like veterans come out to the ranch and they do fundraisers and certain hunts. And I think I just like really connected with that type of like work and like connecting with the veterans is like something that like I really cherish. So being able to do that, like hopefully uh, once I graduate is what I plan on pursuing. Very cool. Very cool. All right, I'm going to give you one more chance because there's a freshman that's standing out in my eyes. So I'm going to ask you which freshman is standing out the most in your eyes. Uh, Katie Stewart. She's been like extremely great on and off the field. Uh, me and her have become really close. We go to lunch every week. Uh, she is just incredible, like strength. She's someone I look up to. Like she's just going to be a very big powerhouse. And I can't just say one because Katie Henry is another one that's standing out for me that's just doing absolutely everything right like on and off the field um she's a great teammate she's great on the uh at bats and outfield and then obviously tegan tegan's a really great pitcher uh me and her have become really close too so being able to catch her and uh she's performing really well i think she's honestly one of the most like mentally strong uh teammates we have i mean she has like everything in her head figured out which i really admire about her Talk about facing off against Tegan. You know, you said you guys were scrimmaging so much. And I know prior to UCLA, she had, I had chatted with her and she was like, man, I'm getting, I'm getting beat up. Is this what it's going to be like in, in season? So talk about facing off against Tegan a little bit. Yeah. Tegan's definitely one of the toughest pitchers like I've had to face off with. Um, I mean, her rise ball is uh, very good. And obviously like, she's just like extremely like competitive. So like, she's not going to let you down with anything. Uh, I think she's really good at like hitting uh, her spots and locations. And then she obviously has her nasty change up to throw right behind it. Very cool. When you go out to, to the circle and talk to the pitchers, each I, I know from experience, obviously, each pitcher is different. So how do you communicate with each one of them? Uh, like you said, every one of them is different. So, so you got five. <laughs> what was that? 
Then you got like five of them to deal with. So like, I think Tegan for her, like going out and talking to her, it's just more like take a breath, take it easy. Uh, for Sid Lolly, I usually just say something stupid, funny, and then she's already right back in. Um, Estelle obviously like has like all the energy and like aggression. So like for her, it's more of like aggressive type of like conversation to get her fired up. And then Mac, I think Max got her head like all figured out. Like she's able to do it on her own. So I don't really got to say much to Mac. So being able to walk out to Mac and just give her a pat on the back. We lock eyes and we're connected and we're back on track. Perfect. Blake, you got anything else? I got, yeah, I got one question, but I, I want you, if you don't mind, to talk about Reese and this year's team, if, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay, so before we get out of here, Kat, I do have one last question for you. Talk to, talk to us a little bit about Reese and her play and along with this team as well. What makes them so special? Well, I think we saw, um, I don't even want to say flashes, but the second half of last year, what Reese is capable of. And I think the hard thing as a sophomore is that they're, the scouting report's out on you and Reese having played practically every game or probably every game last year as a freshman, there's a lot of swings and a lot of video. And so it's trying to avoid that sophomore slump and what can you do um, to, you know, continue to maintain consistency and, um, to see her this season come out the way she is. And we all know she has power and she can come up clutch, but she's hitting to all parts of the field. Um, her power isn't just left field anymore. She's going dead center off of Kennedy from Stanford. And we've seen doubles into the right center and right field. And when you can show that you can hit to all parts of the field, it's so hard to pitch to a hitter. And so um, it's just really cool to see an athlete be able to adjust that quickly um, within their career. And, um, you know, I think the team feeds off her, whether she wants to admit that or not. But when she goes, they go. And so it's been fun to see them. But you can tell they're close. Um, you could tell last year's team had a little bit of that, too, building off of the 2022 World Series. But um, you can just get a different feel around them and watching them, how they pick each other up, how they feed off of each other when they all do start hitting or defensive plays are made. Um, and then, you know, Every, every college coach will tell you it starts in the circle. You have to have a pitching staff in order to be successful. And their pitching staff is doing their job, which makes them on defense be able to relax a little bit. It's not a stressful game on both sides of the ball all the time, um, which allows them to really focus on offense. But, um, you know, I think I joked on Twitter when someone said, can you imagine having this offense? And I say, I try not to, um, but I'm very envious of the fact that, you know, you can you can relax as a pitcher because one or two runs isn't usually gonna gonna hurt you with this offense. But um, it's fun to see because they are still relatively relatively young when you talk about the five freshmen from last year, and then um, you know you add the names that Reese talked about today with Katie Stewart, uh, Caden Henry, Tegan Kavan. You know Victoria Hunter's coming off the bench right now most of the time, but that's another bat that's going to add to it as in the future. So. Future's bright for them, um, but it's been exciting. Uh, it's it's a very exciting brand of Texas softball, and I mean, I'll go on record. I think it's the best roster um, our program has ever seen at this point. Oh wow, high price for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I definitely appreciate it, Kat. Thank you for for taking the reins there. And I, like I said, you know a lot more than I do, <laughs> so I, I definitely appreciate it. And Reese, thank you for uh, sharing your time. I, time is limited right now. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having us.